Hey guys, it's Sam, and today we're going to talk about Steeper Ed Minus and Flatter Ed Plus. SAM and FAP. Um, these are two acronyms that are going to help you on your NCLE examination. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Also, I really appreciate your comments, your feedback, um, and also when you like the channel, that will help the algorithm um, and help you guys get more content to help you on your exam. So tonight is really neat because we're going to look at um, this one example through of, of adding that plus power, adding that minus power when it's called for in an example. But as we do that, we're going to see a number of different things such as transposition, um, you know, converting to minus cylinder, and also compensating for vertex distance. So it's going to work through a lot of different things that you will encounter on your exam. So I'm going to go ahead and put up an example on the board here. Okay, so let's let's look at this. These are K readings, 42 slash 4350 at 90. So right here we have so many you know learning points. So um, these are our corneal strengths. So when we're using our keratometer, we're reading um, the weakest point, the, the the flattest and the steepest point on the cornea. So we could see you guys have to know that the the flatter number is the lower number. So 42 would be flatter. 4350 is steeper. A great point just to, to also remind you that an 8.3 base curve is actually steeper than an 8.7. So when you see base curve as a radius of curvature, the lower numbers are steeper. But when you see a base curve as more of a, a K reading, then the higher number is steeper. So we also see that the steepest K reading is along the 90 degree meridian. So what's, what's interesting about that is you'll need to know with the rule, against the rule, oblique astigmatism. So this would be with the rule, because with the rule astigmatism, think of it like a football that's laying down on the ground. That 90 degree meridian, that up and down, is going to be your steepest. So, and 30 degrees um, to either side of it would be considered with the rule. Against the rule, your football is standing up like that, so you can imagine how the steeper meridian will be along that 180. Oblique meridian is between the 120 and the 150 axis or the the 30 and 60 degree axis. It's kind of in that in between the with the rule and against the rule. Then we also have irregular astigmatism which is when um, your two your steepest and your flattest points are not 90 degrees apart and that's when you're going to need something like a scleral or haptic lens to correct for that. But here we could see um, flattest, steepest point. We know it's with the rule of astigmatism. Um, with gas permeable lenses, if you remember, you can correct for up to uh, three diopters of with the rule of astigmatism with a spherical gas permeable lens. That's really neat. It has two diopters for against the rule. So it's really important to know what type of astigmatism is present. We do see that we have from 42 to 4350, that's one and a half diopters of corneal astigmatism present in these K readings. So there's a lot just to glean from just the start of this example and things that you'll need to kind of commit to memory or be able to have a, a working knowledge of. So I'm going to put up a, a prescription here to go alongside with it. Let's do negative 9 plus 150. We'll do axis uh, 90. Okay, negative 9 plus 150, axis 90. I hope you can see that. Um, we're going to say the vertex distance is 13 millimeters. That's very important. Um, we're going to say that this example, so what we're looking for with the steeper ed uh, minus the flatter ed plus is in these questions, it's going to say um, what lens would you fit um, and you're going to fit it, you know, a half a diopter steeper than K or a half a diopter flatter than K or one diopter steeper than K. So it's going to be that little tag on to the question where you could resolve the issue but then if you don't know what to do with that, you know, fit flatter than K or steeper, then you're going to be in trouble because you won't know which direction to go. That's the whole point of that acronym, steeper ed minus, which I'm partial to, Sam, or FAP, you know, flatter ed plus. So here's our example. Um, and we're going to say we want to fit this lens a half a diopter steeper than K. So I'll put steeper than K. Just so we can remember that. So the first thing we want to do here is convert to minus cylinder form. We know um, always have to work in minus cylinder form. So whenever you see a prescription, um, 
it doesn't matter what it is. If you see this plus cylinder value in here, you want to convert it to minus cylinder. And we do that by transposing. We're going to add the cylinder to the sphere. So a plus 150 and a minus 9, we're left with a minus 750. Drop the um, plus sign down, change it to a minus. Keep this value the same. And very important, we rotate that axis 90 degrees. So this minus 750, minus 150, axis 180, says the same thing as this minus 9, plus 150, axis 90. It's just written in a different way, a way that we can work with it now. So, um, and, and also from this, just to use this as a, another learning point, is this minus 9 at 90? That's the power at 90. So when we have our eye on that vertical meridian, that 90 degree meridian, the power is negative 9. But when we transpose it, we see it's minus 750 along the 180 meridian. And you have all these powers in between it, right? So a prescription is showing you the strongest point and the weakest, the steepest and the flattest point on that prescription. So I hope that makes sense. But this is how we have to work with this uh, particular problem. And so from there, we did, you know, we transposed it, we have it in minus cylinder, but it's still looking at that, that's kind of ugly still, right? Um, there's something that um, we know that when we fit in contact lenses, when you see four diopters or higher, we really have to start considering uh, compensating for vertex distance, right? So here we have a, a minus 750, uh, minus 150, axis 180. So, so next thing we need to do is compensate this for vertex distance. And just as a side note for compensating for vertex distance, I have a couple videos up strictly on compensating for vertex distance. And if that's something you struggle with, I suggest you maybe watch this, but then go and visit those a few times. It'll help it to sink in. But you know, on the, on the test, you're not gonna use a calculator. You're not gonna use the perceived power equals original power divided by one plus the change in vertex distance times the original power. You're just not gonna do that. So you have to know some rules of thumb. I always, what I can remember is a, is a plus nine lens, um, like a eyeglass refraction at 13 millimeters. Um, is going to act more like a plus 10 on the eye, like a contact lenses, because all eyeglass refractions um, behave uh, more plus further out. So when we're wearing contact lenses, we have to make the prescription more plus for contacts because it's behaving more plus the further from the eye it gets, right? So all for the NCLE, all these examples, when we're taking a refraction to contact lens prescription, we're making it less minus or more plus. But what I was saying is that I can re I know that a plus nine is kind of like a plus 10. And what I know from that is that that's a lot of power in nine, right? This looks like a lot of power, uh, a 750 value, but it's not even a, a nine. So we know we're not gonna get a full diopter's worth of change, right? So that's where you can look at your answers on the test and you'll pretty much always be able to um, guess the right answer because they, they know you don't have a calculator. So they're gonna have it, um, they're not gonna have two that are like, within a quarter diopter, like super close, and you have to, you know, exactly which one it is. No, it's gonna be reasonable, right? But if we were to work this out, we'd have minus 750, right? So that's your, uh, per, your perceived power equals minus 750 divided by, then we have our parentheses, one plus, then we have the change in vertex distance, right? So it's negative 0.013 because that's just how you write that out with 13 millimeters going to, you know, it's going closer, it's going to zero millimeters, right? So negative 0.013. And then you have times the original power, times negative 750. All right, that's a lot of math, it's kind of ugly. Here's where you'd remember your PEMDAS, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and you have to follow the order of operations is what it's called. But what it happens is you multiply these and you get one plus, when you multiply the, the negative 0.013 uh, and the negative 750, you get 0 0.0975. And I encourage you to do it on a calculator just for a good exercise of doing it, but, but really for the test, you're gonna wanna be able to think through these examples. Um, so then uh, what you're gonna get is negative 750 divided by, uh, you know, 1.0975. And your answer is going to be negative 6.85. So 
So this negative 750 that was refracted out here is behaving like a negative 6.85. So when you have this negative 6.85, which, you know, if you were leaving it like that, if you weren't doing, um, fitting it a half a doctor steeper than K, you might, you know, go with a negative 675 uh, lens. If we're doing a gas permeable, um, it's with the rule. So we know that that tier, the tier layer is going to fill in behind the gas permeable lens. It's going to create an effective lens and we don't even need to correct with the, uh, the toric lens. Or if you're using a soft, toric contact lens, we could just prescribe the astigmatism, it's going to drape the cornea, um, and we could just keep it simple like that. But we are fitting this lens uh, a half a diopter steeper than K, so we're not done just yet. So steeper add minus. So it said, the, our question on the test says, a half a diopter steeper than K. So what happens when you add um, a negative 6.85 plus um, uh, a negative a half, right? So it's negative 6.85 plus a minus 0 0.50. I know that's incredibly ugly. So you get negative 7 point, uh, was that negative 7.35. So on eighth diopter, you'd see negative 7.37. So steeper added minus, I would say negative 7.37. Uh, spherical gas permeable is going to take care of that patient. But what if it was our FAP, our flatter add plus? Then you'd have negative 6.85 plus a plus 0 0.50, and you would go from the 6.85, if you're adding um, to a minus 6.85, if you're adding plus power, you go down to a minus 6.35, or you might say a minus 6.37, if we're doing flatter add plus. So these are super easy. You just work through the example, and at the very end, you have to consider, um, do we want to make this lens flatter? Do we want to make this lens steeper? Uh, and just a side note, you know, why would somebody want to make a lens flatter, right? So a flatter lens is going to fit looser than a steeper lens is going to fit tighter. Just like if you increase the diameter of a contact lens, any lens, this is an immutable, unchangeable law, a steeper lens is going to fit tighter, a larger diameter lens is going to fit tighter. Um, if you have a contact lens with a shorter radius of curvature, right? So radius of curvature is our base curve. If it's shorter, like an 8.3 versus an 8.7, it's going to be steeper. It's going to fit tighter. So I'm just throwing some pearls of wisdom at you there. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. Again, please go ahead and um, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try and put out videos fairly, fairly regularly. Um, I just, I just enjoy doing this and, and hope that it's beneficial to you in your studies and until next time.